Oh, hi. Uh, this is Zik. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. And, uh, good morning from wherever you're watching this. I am here to talk about monitoring. Yay! I know that's everyone's uh, favorite topic, and especially for the system admins out there. I'm sure they would agree with me, right? Um, I would kind of like to share some ways you can improve the current monitoring solutions and make them smarter uh, for your workplace or any environment you're in using only open source based software. So perhaps I, I should start off by introducing myself a little bit. I am called Joseph uh, Zixoka in full, uh, but most people uh, know me by Zik, Z I K or Z I K. I'm uh, a Linux uh, engineer and uh, CEO at uh, Jambula Labs. I'm also the founder of the company. Uh, I've done uh, quite a bit there, really everything been a technician, been a sales guy, been pretty much everything as most of you can relate to. Um, never never really a, <laughs> a dull moment. Uh, but um, we really specialize really in open source based software products um, from a very, very early time and I'm talking around 2015 when uh, uh, Jambola was uh, established. But um, personally, I really started using Linux around 2003. I uh, stepped into OpenSUSE around 2005 when I uh, started teaching a group of students um, Linux or how to use Linux for the very first time. It was very, very exciting uh, those days um, because one, Linux was really unknown to so many, um, but also it wasn't really the thing it is now. Most companies have never heard about it. And so it, uh, selling it was a really, really a tough uh, thing uh, so we many of us and uh, I included decided really to take on an advocacy role and so most times we would refer to ourselves as uh, open source or Linux ev evangelists um, but uh, lately I'm really into uh, the smart home and especially you know, like uh, embedded systems um, that that do monitor different things within the home, whether it is your security, whether it is your energy usage, whether it is uh, um, the things that make life a little bit easy at home. So I've been building quite a number of those um, OS type images. Um, there's a very nice uh, project that I'll share my GitHub uh, account a little bit later on, but uh, you can check out uh, that project to see what what I've been doing and what I'm up to lately. Um, so it's really been um, a Linux and open source in general for me. Uh, I've done a bit of distro, distro hoping. Uh, but really love open source a lot. Um, I, I wanted to begin uh, basically by really asking the obvious, you know, I mean, why is monitoring important, right? Um, it seems like it's a dumb question to ask, but, um, you know, when you think about the many things that uh, right now need to be uh, monitored um, and, and the type of uh, infrastructure that you're looking at, it's very, very, very difficult to, to under, 
understate the importance of uh, monitoring this day and age. Um, but but uh, just think about how many times you've been pulled out of uh, maybe a family event, uh, maybe you're just resting at home or you're on vacation and, and you have to either run back into the office or run back on the site uh, to try and fix something that has gone wrong. Uh, not really a fun proposition for most people. Um, I know I don't love it at all. Um, so really, uh, the goal of uh, monitoring is to try and avoid the interruptions, downtimes uh, that are caused by uh, failures. Uh, you also want to be uh, up to date with uh, the different security um, situations that are happening within your systems. So you, you, you really want to be watching out for malicious and nefarious activity or any intrusions within your systems. Um, uh, dear to me is uh, being able to monitor your internet availability and bandwidth. Um, in this part of Africa, we're, we're a bit um, uh, kind of uh, struggling a bit with internet, uh, not only in terms of it being flaky, but really the cost is really high. So um, just to get a, a, a 20 Mbps connection at only 50 euros per month is quite a bit for a lot. For a lot. So you want to really be monitoring that and then also of course getting advance uh, warnings of, of any events that might occur. But really, um, I, I really, uh, I, I personally never liked being at the, uh, at the site, uh, especially when uh, there was sort of quote unquote a fire, you know, because you never know what to expect. Um, as my as as this little comic that I've put together kind of uh, uh, shows, um, but um, the idea is is that you really want to be uh, sure that what you're going to fix has already been something you you saw coming, and um, yeah. So I'm sure most of you are getting the joke. The idea is you don't want to be going on a site to fix um, something that, that doesn't exist, like a, a stuck key on a keyboard, um, someone thinking there is a problem with that machine. So let's, let's look at uh, the different places where monitoring is really critical. I would uh, argue everywhere, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, lots of infrastructure that requires uh, uh, monitoring, but initially uh, we tended to focus on servers, so your typical mail servers, the DNS servers, the databases, the file, LDAP, SSH, and etc. And of course, you have your online web services and APS that are that you want to be monitoring, uh, especially if, uh, for critical operations, for example, the bank or in the medical sector or health uh, sector. Um, you also want to be checking up on your backup and storage devices or uh, processes, um, so that whatever you your, your backing up is something that uh, is restorable. Um, for sysadmins, you really want to be monitoring your PC desktops, laptops, printers, switches, routers, and firewalls, and any kind of uh, device uh, using SNMP. Um, but the most recent addition is that of edge computing and uh, Internet of Things. Yeah, I know that what kind of Yuck. But um, the idea is is that you have so many of these SOC embedded devices in very hard to reach places. Some of them are attached to uh, say lamp uh, poles out in the field. Um, some of them will do things like monitoring air quality. Some of them might do like security cameras. 
So all these have to really be monitored, um, whether it is for a company, whether it is for an organization, whether it is for a city, a municipality, whatever. Um, uh, but but uh, the bigger one are data centers that do require constant monitoring. That's uh, an, an obvious uh, use case there. Um, so traditionally, we've uh, tended to use uh, very very simple techniques. You know, of course, you have the good old phone call from the funding client, uh, basically telling you, okay, uh, I cannot connect to the database. Um, but usually those calls are not calls you you and I love to, to get. Um, so again, it's, it's a, it's, it seems like the easiest and the first thing a client would do. Um, of course, you also have system logs uh, that, that you can look at um, when a system fails. Um, in the Linux world, you're, you're talking uh, these days system D, uh, but those days you're looking at syslog, um, you're looking at the message, um, and, and all types of logs from different applications on, on the system. Um, email, um, so email uh, being the, the form of uh, notification. Um, uh, pages, believe it or not, some of these are still being used. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but uh, dashboards, and I'm not talking about your uh, dashboards the way you're thinking, more like digital like displays, and of course, and uh, in some cases, audible alarms. Um, so those are some of the ways um, traditionally we've kind of looked at, you know, um, uh, uh, monitoring uh, notifications and, and, and how to get to know what is happening on the, on the network or on the server or some type of uh, device. But here is the problem um, and why we really need uh, smart monitoring. You know, so so there is nothing really wrong with those traditional um, systems. Uh, or methods, they do work in some situations, but a new approach is really needed. And here is why. For example, take a look at uh, phone calls. One, they're stressful for everybody. Um, you, know, you don't really get any useful uh, details or information on how to troubleshoot. Most times you're really shooting in the dark. Um, again, take email too. Um, I would really call it the new s snail mail, right? Uh, not really actionable and sometimes you don't even know if someone has received it or not um, Plus also the insecurity of it, you know, so um, Again, that's a problem uh, logs um, even if you have uh, uh, Passing techniques that have become a bit more better uh, if you look at uh, system D you can really query in very smart ways, but um, traditionally uh, you know, a lot of these passers would have a hard time going through all these logs to see what is happening. Um, and just generally, they, they, there is not so much intelligence in that in that whole process. Uh, what can I say about pages? Pages are just simply, you know, um, simply really not uh, that that uh, helpful. Uh, they are one-way devices. Uh, very hard to get these days. Uh, I don't, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't know if you know of anybody closer to you using them. So they are really more now in smaller or niche uh, industries, uh, specifically like health. Uh, so really, we we need a smart uh, monitoring type of setup is needed, right? So what constitutes that? Um, number one is really it has to be real time, right? Um, you have to be monitoring continuous, continuously. Um, it should be able to integrate with uh, existing uh, monitoring software. It should integrate with uh, existing incident management uh, platforms. And it should really find 
the operator or the admin or the person who is being notified anywhere at any time, right? So really, what I would call portable, it should really be portable. Um, number two, it should really be self-healing. Um, in some cases, not every case, because, um, you know, so a simple reboot, you really don't need to be running to a site to worry about that. A simple DB database table repair that, that you can um, uh, do automatically. The number three, it should really be scalable and flexible. So the ability to add devices as you as you expand, right? Um, just uh, 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 making it suitable for your site needs for whatever you want to use it. Uh, creating dashboards that that are suitable just for your environment. That's what a smart uh, monitoring system would would, would really bring. Um, but also most important and one I like most because um, it's really my area these days is really being able to take advantage of smart uh, smart devices that are now available especially like uh, for the home um, most of the traditional uh, setups really uh, you have having to link them up with uh, the smart uh, devices currently on the market is a bit of a challenge so above all it should really be cost effective so um, so in a nutshell really that's what um, if you look at uh, the slide that's really what we are looking at is uh, you have on the, on, on the, as really as a nav center the monitoring software engine and we'll see examples of this shortly um, and then of course you would have uh, automated notifications and alerting, uh, visualizations of, uh, that, that can come in the form of dashboards, uh, smarter log management uh, uh, tools, and then also being able to integrate it with uh, a ticketing software like OSTK, OTRS, Request Tracker, and the like. So, but uh, so if you look at uh, this really pretty much uh, what it, it can all be one system it can be several broken up into several systems it's really uh, your choice and, and depending on what um, what uh, type of platform you need. Um, when you look at uh, what we have right now pretty 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 advanced and uh, compared to where we were um, so a lot of these are doing uh, all this in one form or the other. So my favorite is a singer, um, which used to be a, a, a fork of uh, Nagios. Um, you have Cacti, you have Zabbix, you have uh, NetDat and all the others that um, most of which you, you guys already know. Um, but I really, I really love uh, a singer. I hope I'm pronouncing it right for my German friends. Um, why? Because it's um, you can create your own um, plugins with it, and uh, uh, but many new of the recent features uh, are really really interesting. You have the Icinga uh, Director Cube Certificate Monitoring, Business Process Monitoring, and so many other new features with the with the latest releases. Um, the Icinga web integrates very well with ticketing software, so if you really need to do effective um, uh, ban, uh, effective incident management. Um, so I would recommend if you're really wanting to know more about Icinga and what is new as of recent, uh, I would say check out um, a video uh, that was uh, done uh, at the Open Source Monitoring Conference uh, in 2023. It's titled The Current State of Icinga by Ban Ag. Um, so I'm sure you can find it easily on uh, YouTube. Um, so um, the in, on the other end, you of course, you, it's one thing having the, uh, the monitoring uh, software engine but you also need the alerts how can they be smarter well 
for them to be smarter, we want to for the for the notifications to reach you anywhere, wherever you are, anywhere, right? Um, these days we're constantly on the move, so the device that everyone is carrying is really the phone, right? So let's use that for our lads. Um, so number one is chat messaging, right? So here you have a ton of messaging. Uh, so you have Signal, you have Matrix and others, WhatsApp, Telegram. Uh, but I'm gonna focus mainly on the open source ones that specifically Signal. I love Signal a lot. Um, and then of course uh, you have uh, XMPP, which has been around for a long time. Uh, just never took off, but it's really been around, but you can really extend it in, in very cool ways. Um, I I tend to uh, spend more time on Signal, so for me it is the easiest to reach me on. Um, and But I like it because one, it is open source, um, it is secure, and then of course uh, I like what they are doing, uh, standing up for the good guys. Uh, chant control, um, that whole uh, not shying away from public policy is something that uh, I really appreciate from any uh, software uh, software provider or project. Um, one of the things that um, that uh, you know, like that that has really taken off a lot, of course, is the home, right? The smart home. We have all these speakers. We have all these uh, nice uh, gadgets that you can use. So. We, you can extend notifications to in, in, in very, very cool and interesting ways. So, of course, I mentioned uh, XMPP, uh, Java. So, you can use a server like uh, Posidy or a Java. Um, you could also do use MQTT to send uh, just uh, quick messages. Um, in case of alerts, you can use lighting. So do interesting things with lighting for example um, the one that is mostly quoted is let's say you know you say okay uh, tell me when the air quality is um, is not great so uh, the, let the light turn red in the living room you know that's that's monitoring um, maybe not in the industrial kind of scale but it is it is nice to have that um, and again, I'm thinking here, home assistant, home assistant, home assistant. Um, I love that what those guys are really doing. Um, so it's um, it's really the ability to take uh, monitoring to a whole new level, um, and that's really uh, thanks to the power of open source, um, which allows you to really do extra stuff with what is available customize, extend, you know, stretch, whatever you want to do uh, in terms of uh, uh, monitoring something that is maybe even not secure that uh, might not be used by everyone. So we'll start to prepare for a demo here shortly. And, um, but I, I want to focus mainly on, um, on uh, using specifically um, uh, like an existing uh, uh, platform uh, that is iSinger um, and then also for alerting I, I will use my favorite which is Signal just to show you what is really really possible um, in, um, in the open source world of, of uh, monitoring these days so I just want to switch over uh, right now to to my uh, demos, and um, I have a VM running, um, uh, and it is with the latest um, open source uh, leap version. Uh, by the way, thank you so much to all the developers and all the contributors who made this release possible. Really, really, really a fine one. So, um, 
I, I really like uh, installing it was the breeze. Um, everything is set up nicely and didn't run into so many issues. So, um, so basically, let me let me connect to the VM. Um, so once we have uh, we are connected, one of the things that I want to do is we want to to, to install. Um, we want to install a uh, singer first. Now I've gone ahead and uh, done it. Um, uh, the whole idea of having something baked before um, for the demo, but um, I've also made it a little bit easier in the links that are, you were seeing a little bit earlier. And again, it's just simply my GitHub page. You will find all these uh, scripts there. I've made it easier for you to install both iSinger and um, and um, uh, Signal CLI, which is what we're going to use for the notifications. So for for iSinger, um, we're just going to basically install. And um, again, I've already installed it here, so I, I'm going to skip the install. But uh, when you start it. It should uh, give you something like this, um, telling you that it is installing and, and it really do most of the, uh, the the dependencies for you. And of course, initially setting up the repositories. Um, most of that are zip zipper commands, zip zipper install commands. So, um, and then of course the the, the iSinger routine setup routines. When it's all said and done, you will receive a notice that will tell you to to go to a web to, to a URL uh, to, to complete the setup for the iSinger web. Um, and uh, so, it will, the nice thing with this uh, script uh, that again you can find at uh, my GitHub uh, page is that it will actually give you all the credentials that that you specify that you will use throughout the setup process. There is a bit of a, a step up, a, st a bunch of steps that you will follow to try and uh, complete the setup, but it's fairly easy once you have the, the right credentials. Uh, all the databases are set up for you, so you don't have to worry about that, just inputting that data. So once you're done with the setup of a single web, uh, then it's time to basically log into the web interface and, uh, using the uh, this URL um, that will be provided to you uh, after the setup and uh, logging in. So you should uh, see something similar to to this. Um, so you would input your username and then your password. Simple, right? Uh, once you log in, um, you should be able to see uh, basically what the dashboard looks like. So I, I like the way um, it's visually done uh, to really be appealing to the eye. So reds are usually like uh, critical alerts and then uh, orange or yellow depending on how you see are usually uh, for warnings and so um, it's really done quite nicely uh, be able to give you details so right now uh, you could have an alert that shows um, that we're basically having disk issues and um, uh, that's what it would look like and then the actual signal message that would go out by the way this is how it would look on the on the overview tactical overview um, the actual signal message would look something like this um, so I ran into some issues with the demo um, so but um, it's fairly simple to get started uh, there's a lot of material online um, uh, do ask me feel free to uh, send me a message uh, and I'll be glad to uh, to answer uh, basically like the, the
the future really for monitoring is really artificial intelligence, what you would say AI, right? And um, it seems like a perfect match, right? Um, AI, ML algorithms to basically detect anomalies, predict failures, and pro provide that uh, proactive recommendation uh, based on um, historical data. So the future looks good for monitoring. Um, if you need to reach me, how I can be reached really on all these channels, uh, but feel free to scan that code. Um, um, most times at, uh, on Mastodon, so uh, do follow me while you're there. But all the other socials, you will find me, as you can see. I just want to thank you for watching this presentation, listening to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, safe trip back home. Thank you.